What's up, friends? If you're like me, you're constantly on the lookout for the best Web3 wallet to manage your digital assets. I, for one, have 16 different Web3 wallets on my phone alone. That's not counting all the browser extensions, websites, cold wallets, all those types of things that I use. And I found one recently that's been really helpful to me and really combines a lot of different things into one place that I find really to be beneficial. And that's the Core Digital Wallet provided by the Avalanche team. So now let's talk a little bit more about how you can use Core and why it's beneficial to you. So uh, one of the main things that's been really helpful to me personally personally has been the ability to track token prices within the same app that I use for all of my activity. So now what, what do I mean by that? Well, obviously you can see the current price in most wallets out there, but you can't necessarily see things like trending. So you can't see charts, things like that, that show kind of how the price has been changing, any kind of trends like that. Um, so the core app really has some great ability to do that. Uh, another big one that it offers is the ability to access different subnets. So especially now, as you start to see more subnets available, especially in the Avalanche blockchain, it's easier to be able to interact with those subnets right within the app that has an easy way for you to be able to do that. Uh, and then lastly, especially for those that are kind of newer to Web3, maybe you're not quite as comfortable managing a seed phrase, it's intimidating, there's 12 words to keep safe in a place on paper, hidden away, all those kinds of things. They've actually made it really easy for you to be able to do that with an Apple ID or a Google sign-on in order to kind of keep your assets secure. It'll generate a, a private key for you. You, uh, and you can actually use it right within that uh, combined with an authenticator to help keep everything safe. So really those three reasons, it's been a really beneficial tool for me to be using. So let's talk a little bit more about how you can use it. So there's actually, as I mentioned before, a few different ways. You can do a mobile app, you can do a browser extension, you can also do it as a uh, as a website. So let's go ahead and start with the mobile app and we'll just do a quick demo of some of the things that I like about the tool. All right, so you can see here we have my demo wallet. Obviously this is not my everyday wallet that I use. I only have 25 cents worth of AVAX, but uh, I do wanna show you kind of how, how you can use it as well. So if you look up at the top of the screen, you can see my favorite. So this is what I was talking about when I mentioned that you have the ability to to track token prices right within the app. So instead of going to some other tool or other app that you have, you can do that right within here. So if I wanna track AVAX, I can just tap on it. And then you can see here the 24 hour trends that AVAX has had. You can see today's been a relatively good day for AVAX uh, in there. I can also scroll down and you can see the market cap. You can see a link to the website, which is also really nice. You can see if there's a X handle that is available for it, you can tap on that. It'll take you to uh, the official handle for that. So if you wanna just kind of see what's happening with it. It's great for that type of thing. You can also look at different time periods. You can do a week, you can do a month, you can do three months, you can even do a year. So it's a great way for you to be able to see, you know, how that activity has happened over time. Uh, and I can just tap back and you can see that same thing for other tokens. So if we look here, for example, in uh, Kakinu, you can see, you know, what's the Twitter handle, the website, that kind of thing. And especially if you're into meme coins or things like that, where it's a little bit harder to kind of track down the official accounts for those types of things. It's really great to be able to see that if you really want to get a sense of, you know, what is this community all about, that type of thing. It's a great way for you to be able to do that uh, all in one place again. So I'm going to go ahead and tap back. So that's how I track token prices. Let's look at how I can actually interact with the tokens that I do have. So if I tap here on the top, so you can see Avalanche C Chain is up on the top there. That's because I have it chosen here uh, in the drop down on the top right. Uh, if I change to a different chain, then it would let me access that up here on top as well. But I can tap right here on Avalanche. You can see the tokens that I have. So I only have a little bit because this is a demo wallet. Uh, but if I did have other tokens, it would show you know any other tokens on the C Chain that I might have. Uh, if I want to to um, add tokens to it, I can actually go here to either receive or I can tap on buy and it'll let me um, do some on-ramping here as well. So I can either use MoonPay or Coinbase Pay in order to buy additional AVAX directly into my wallet, which is really nice to be able to do. So I'm going to go back. You also have the ability to add additional chains. So let's say I had another chain I wanted to add and go here to manage networks. It's going to default to my favorites, but I can tap this networks button here and it'll show me all the other ones. If I wanted to add one of these that wasn't already starred, I could just tap on the star and it would add it to my wallet there as well. If I wanted to add one that's not already in here, I can go to custom and I can tap on this plus sign and then I can view the, use the URL in order to find that. So let's say I wanted to add Fuji Testnet uh, because I was testing some things out. I could actually do that right here or, any, or another EVM chain as well. So really nice to be able to access it and do all of that also. 
So that's how you use kind of the, the main features on that. So some other things that you can do, you can actually track watch lists so you can see kind of a, a different view. I had those favorites across the top. I can also track um, lots of different tokens here, even the ones that aren't in my favorites, um, or I can use the favorites view as well if I wanted to see them in more of a list view. Um, if you're going to stake assets, you can actually do that right here within the app as well. So that's really nice to be able to do. Uh, I'm not going to do that today. Uh, but then there's also the standard browser. So if I want to interact with any, you know, NFT projects that I might be involved in, I can do that. I can also flip over if I want to do some trading. Um, you also have the ability to do that right within the app. But if I wanted to use a DEX, I can do that right here as well. Uh, and then the last thing that I'll share with you is this the ability to um, add an address book. So if I tap here on address book, Let's say I have other wallets that I'm frequently sending funds back and forth to. Maybe they're my own wallets. Maybe they're a friend of mine. I have the ability to add that here just so that I don't have to worry about tracking down that wallet address all the time. Um, so that's really how the um, mobile app works. I uh, want to show you next how, the, um, how it works to access it using a browser extension and then also using the web itself. All right, so here we are on the Core App website. Uh, so we're actually going to start with the browser extension, and I want to show you some of the things that are available here within the portfolio view as well. So I'm going to click on my browser extension up at the right here. One of the things that's really nice about it is that it actually has a lot of similarity to the mobile app. So if you really like the interface of the mobile app, it's going to be very similar when you get to the browser extension. So uh, same way we just looked at the ability to buy additional coin here, you can actually tap here on the C chain. You can see the um, activity that I've had with that token. If I click on actions, I can also buy, send, receive, very similar to what we did before. You also have the ability to bridge. So if I wanted to bridge from one chain to the other, it's really nice to be able to do that all in one place. Uh, I only have one token, so it's only going to show that option. But let's say I was going to do Ethereum to Avalanche. I can go ahead and click on that, choose the token that I want to bridge. Let's say I'm going to uh, transfer some USDC. I can actually do that right here within the app, which is really nice. Um, so, so you have the same ability if I had any NFTs I could see those here in collectibles uh, for DeFi let's say I had some uh, liquid staked assets that I wanted to be able to track um, or let's say I took out a loan on some of my assets that I have I'd be able to see that all right here as well so I don't have to always go back to the the decks or whatever tool that I use to do that uh, I can access it right here in one place and then otherwise, you also have the ability to do some of those same types of things we just looked at. Um, you can use the address book function, and then you can also go to Core Web. So if you click on Core Web there, it'll take you to this website that we're about to look at. So a few things that I'll share with you on the Core website that are really cool. So we have this portfolio view, again, very similar types of things that we just looked at within both the extension and the mobile app. Uh, but I do want to share with you, if you are uh, into staking your assets, let's say you have um, enough assets you want to delegate them or maybe you have a validator and you want to do that you can do that right here within the website so you go to stake um, first thing you're going to want to do if you are staking is you're going to want to move your tokens off the c chain onto the p chain uh, and that's really easy to do you just click here on cross chain transfer and then you choose the chain you're coming from which in this case is the c chain the chain you're going to which is the p chain and then how much you're going to transfer so it's really nice to be able to do it that way um, you um for those that maybe haven't done this before your wallet address is a little bit different on the p chain than it is on the c chain uh, but this site will know what your corresponding address is for the p chain for that same um, seed phrase so it's really easy to be able to do that here so you can transfer your assets over once they're there you can go over here to delegate and then you can start the process to do that so you need a minimum of 25 avax in order to delegate i only have 25 cents worth um, so i'm not able to demo that for you on here but this is what it'll look like when you when you go to do that so one of the other things that I've really found helpful about this site is, especially for those of you that are new to the Avalanche ecosystem, it's really a great way for you to get your bearings around what all is available here. And that's this Discover tab. So one of the things you'll see here is that if you want to kind of get a sense of, you know, what DEXs do people use on Avalanche, what NFT marketplaces are out there, um, you know, all the different you know, community type of things that are there, it's a great place for you to do that. So for example, you can see here Trader Joe's listed. That's one of the main DEXs that's on Avalanche. Uh, you can also see DEX a lot which is another big player in that space. Um, really a great way to do that. If you want to get a sense of NFT marketplaces that are there, uh, you might see hyperspace that's listed on the page here that lets you know how to access some of those kinds of things. So really a great way to see, you know, what all is out there, that type of thing. Um, so from a project perspective, you'll see all different types of things there for you. You can kind of learn about, you know, what all is there as well. If you're newer to subnets, want to get a sense of what's available from a subnet perspective, you can see that as well. Um, you can also see some of the 
top projects. It'll, it'll list them all there as well. So really nice to be able to have that also. If you're wanting to get more involved in an event perspective, there's an event section here. Um, Avalanche has things going across the world all the time. Um, so if you want to see anything that's in your area, or even if you wanted to plan to go to something that might be uh, coming up, uh, you can actually access that all right here in one place. Um, just clicking on any of these, you can kind of get more information about some of these events that are happening. If you want to learn more about what's going on lately in the news related to Avalanche, you can see this here as well. We were just talking about native staking and how you can do that within the core app. There's a whole article for you here on that. If you want to get to know that a little bit more, uh, lots of different things are available for you here to learn more about all that Avalanche has to offer. Uh, lastly here, if you want to dig into that even more and actually learn more about how some of these things work, maybe you're a dev, you want to learn, you know, specific things about how to code for Avalanche, uh, you can actually learn that here. You can also learn some things that are a little bit more uh, foundational when it comes to Web3. Um, so lots of different things that are on here that really can be really helpful to you as well. All right, the last thing I want to show you here is really for those of you that are a little bit more advanced, uh, and that's the ability to do an airdrop. So if you're not familiar with airdrops, that basically allows you to distribute a token to certain folks, um, and you kind of do that centrally. So let's say I want to give you know a certain number of tokens to everybody that holds a chicken NFT, then I can actually go here and actually do that in a really seamless way. Previously, it was really hard to do that. So if you click here on airdrop, you'll see that I can put in what I want to give. So in this case, it only allows me to see AVAX in there because that's the only token I have in this wallet. But you could distribute other things. Let's say you have a meme coin or something else like that. You just put in here how much you want um, to go out. And then you can either paste in the addresses you want to send it to. You can also, if you have it in a CSV file, like maybe you put it together in Excel or something, you can put that right in here. And you can actually just use this to distribute the tokens. Really nice, seamless, a whole lot easier to do than you might have had to do otherwise. Um, so it's a great thing, especially for those of you that have projects, a great way for you to be able to do that as well. So that really kind of takes us through core in general. So really just to kind of recap some of the main things that I think are great about it. One, being able to track your tokens in one place, not having to worry about a seed phrase is another one. And then for those of you that are a little more advanced, being able to do that airdrop as well. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Um, if you have not tried core yet, I would definitely encourage you to give it a try. You can either import an existing wallet that you have or create a new one like we just talked about, uh, but would love to hear from you in terms of what are some of the things that you like about it. Uh, if you've been using it for a while, please feel free to share that in the comments.